Pheasant Productions presents the Math of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, one of the things that I've been talking about has been the idea that existence is unlimited. And most people can't can even begin to understand that concept simply because they're too used to the idea of limits. You're, you only go so far, you only go so fast, you only eat so much, you only get so much per hour, or get so much for a dollar, or whatever. There's always some kind of limit in front of you. Um, there was a book that came out that women especially, I guess, were very much in, into. It was the uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, I don't know if it was a series or a single book, but, you know, it, it was definitely the, the chitter-chatter for a while back, and I guess even some movies. But, um, as an artist, okay, um, you might have Fifty Shades of Grey, but the reality of it is that you have everything from light to no light, okay? No light is not black, folks. Black can reflect. Rembrandt had, I think, 103 different blacks. So you have to understand that, you know, as artists have a lot more colors. And I'm a nighttime photographer. I'm a dark, you know, a photographer who started in the, the you know, dark rooms and, you know, working you know, under a little red light for, you know, literally hours and hours a day. Um, so I am quite used to having a fairly deeply developed night vision, okay? Um, a lot of people don't know, I even begin to understand my desire to be out shooting at night, even street photography, um, because I'm not going after all the glitzy for us and lights and, and, and you, know, you know, that kind of stuff going on. I know how to shoot it. I will shoot it. I do have some fun with it when I go shoot it. But there is more for me picking on the subtleties of the shading of light at night. And it is most definitely because even at night when I'm looking around, I see, you know, a lot of layering of colors and greens and trees and plants that other people, they don't see, okay? They're not used to being out in the dark to begin with. Their eyes are not adapted to, to that level of, of looking at stuff. And they're not an artist, so they're not used to looking at that level of stuff. And they're not a photographer, so they're not used to looking at that level of stuff. A photographer knows how to arrange his lights so they do a good job. The average person just picks up their cell phone and bang, flat, you know, flat flash in the face. No big deal. Oh, well, I shoot beautiful. I, I have a camera now. I, I'm a professional. It's a cell phone, so yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's like mo the most wild, dizzy, and, you know, and whatever on down the road. There is more to something than just that service appearance. More to the book than just what's on the cover. Um, there's more to learning how to read, and notice how governments don't want you to read, because a movie, like I explained before, um, a movie takes your visual, a movie takes your hearing. You are doing two functions of mental, you know, mental work, mental labor up here. Therefore, your thinking abilities have been silenced. If you stop and read this list, you are going to pull up your own personal opinions. I don't care if it's a rose garden when I say Fukushima radiation. You are thinking, and because you are pulling up your own image, you are using the thought processes of your own brain. So reading is a fundamental requirement of anybody who wants to learn to think for themselves. If you want to think progressively, survival-like, uh, read a lot of sci-fi. Don't read past history of heroes. Don't read past histories of whodunits and things like that. Um, you know, you are welcome to read them. I'm not. I shouldn't say don't read them. Don't read as much of them. 
because most of them are going to set patterns of past behavior. The heroes of World War I were trumped all over the place as we got ready to go into World War II. As we get ready to go into World War III, yeah, we got all the heroes and all the bad guys from all over the world. <laughs> you know, yeah. <clears throat> what is it? It is a past action of what was done by civilizations prior to the Roman Empire. They give you a boogeyman and they give you a, a, a hero. That's all there is to it. They want you to pick two sides. They don't want you to think about it. When, if you, we can get real scientific here. If you, you know, draw a straight line, and you want to divide that into as many sections as you possibly can, and you get out an electron microscope to the umpteenth billionth level of, of magnification, you will always be able to take whatever that object is that you have decided is, is a unit and cut it in half and make two half units no matter how small you go that is unlimited and that is why I say when you stop trying to say you're the only planet that can have life and you're the only only humans can be intelligent as if whales and dolphins and dogs and, and all these things we train to do circus performances to entertain humans who are so smart um, and we totally of course wipe out anything they had for an existence or life of freedom their environments are destroyed so the only place they can live is either in you know zoos or circuses or you know wild animal parks or sea worlds you know things like that where they're all caged down they have none of the freedom they had they have none of the genetic selection that they need to keep viable and healthy offspring you know, you, you suddenly start realizing why humans like to claim that there's only one universe, nothing else can exist. There's only one God, nothing else can exist. You got four main religions, Jews, Christians, Catholics, Muslims. They all run around screaming, there's only one God, and my God gave me permission to kill you, if you don't believe what I say. Now they've run into enough other people around the planet that they finally kind of backed off on that we're going to kill everybody to now we just kill selected ones and we make deals with the deals with the Buddhists so that we also have like the Buddhism, Christianity, the Shinto Christianity, uh, you know, the, the indigenous people Christianity, stuff like this where they're allowed to live and survive, okay? So, that's why I say, you you got to stop and understand there's a huge amount. And you can always divide it into something smaller. And if there is no expansion limits, then there can be no number of gods limited. There can be no number of spiritual beings limited. There can be no way of saying there can never be a more there will, can never be another soul created, and you can never say that any soul will ever die, and you can never say that you will not be reborn somewhere else, some other time. Whether it's a crystalline god, and Tulsa makes comment about that that you know crystals are alive. Any healer will tell you there's all kinds of energy coming through a crystal, so something viable of life must be passing that energy it may not be life like you want you know a sit up and wag its tail and beg for a, a treat like the little puppy dog you know or sit in a cage like a like a parrot did have a nice interesting parrot story there where apparently a parrot learned how to use uh what do they say alexis and it doesn't get past the the, the child block but the parrot, a uh, African Grey, which I happen to know personally can be quite noisy and, and, and talkative and all, um, apparently ordered <laughs> fruit, watermelons, and light bulbs, and all kinds of stuff through Alexis, and it's only when it hits the, the parrot restriction that it gets bounced off. You know, the, the, the computer part says, nope, 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 you're the bird, we know better, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, you, you have a hard time trying to prove you're better than anything else. Except when you use, you know, physical violence. Amazing, isn't it? From Donald Trump. I mean, the world's all laughing at Donald Trump, but you can't find out anything else about what's going on in the world except Donald Trump and, and the leaders fighting each other. I keep talking about how CO2 gas, and people go, oh, yeah, that's right. Coke 
sells 1.7 billion drinks a day. Gee, that's, you know, like, you know, a few hundred gallon, you know, a few hundred million gallons of soda pop every day. That's an awful lot of CO2 being released, folks. Nobody says anything about carbon taxing Coke and Pepsi, do they? They don't talk about car you know, carbonation, carbon CO2 gas in beer. You don't see anybody running around wanting to put carbon tax on, on, on beer, do you? So, you know, that's why I say there, 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 there is a fundamental loss in being taught not to think to the point where you don't even question the reality of your own life in front of you versus what's being said on TV. You, you, don't, you don't look at the fact that, you know, you've been hammered in your entire state, you know, or your country or whatever, and your food supply is dwindling and getting small, and your country, oh, don't worry about it, it's just, it's just a temporary shortage. Temporary? For how long? Yeah, so that's why I say, it, 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 you know, it's definitely a nice idea, whatever my thing is about, you know, using free will. Start thinking. Why is suddenly, around the planet, not just the French protesting, but literally, I think we're up to almost a dozen countries now that I'm getting reports in from around the world of places getting up and rebelling against the corrupt governments. And yet every last one of these is either getting censored by the, you know, the, the mass media routine, or the people are so busy saying, I'm this group, that they don't want to, they don't want to go and reach across the <laughs> across the aisle to the other people that are fighting for exactly the same rights and reasons. So, um, Fifty Shades of Grey, nah, trillions upon trillions upon trillions of shades, from the brightest light to no light. Think about it. <clears throat> oh, and yeah, I, I don't know where this is. As you can see, you know, it is healing up quite well, filling in the, the, the chunks. But like I said, you know, it, it was about a halfway severed finger there, folks. That's all, you know. And, and uh, nothing but natural medicines, uh, colloidal silver being the, I guess, would be considered the only unnatural type thing. But uh, o um, oil of oregano and also oil, coconut oil, olive oil, ginger for keeping it flexible, which I don't think I'm ever going to get the tip back. Uh, it definitely has a numb feeling up there. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no, there no major big pharma medicines put on this at all.